been a long day. It's about nine o'clock at night. I'm hiding, hiding out in the workshop. Ah, man, does that get cold. That little RV refrigerator I got over there gets real cold. Today's question comes from Patreon. It's a great question. It's a question I get a lot. It's kind of two parts, but I'm gonna focus mainly on one section of the question. So here it goes. Hey man, I've been submitting competitive bids and I'm not getting a job. What can I do to ensure that I, I win these bids for new customers when I'm going up against other guys in the area? A supplement to that is he has a friend or a partner that he may work on and off with that uh, went to bid some work through Home Advisor. I think it's Home Advisor, formerly known as Service Magic. Hopefully you haven't had to suffer through one of their sales calls. I was contacted by them seven-ish years ago, seven, eight years ago, and there they are a hard sell. Very aggressive salesman, and somehow they got me uh, and through the initial process and set up with a person that called me back, you know, make an appointment and they're going to make you a website and they're going to do this, they're going to do that. And it goes pretty quick. And I, you know, I always said, I, I got a website. He's like, Oh, don't worry about it. We'll take your website. We'll, we'll relink it to this new website that we're going to make for you. And basically your website will go away but you'll just reuse your domain name along with our domain name. Anyways, it just got to the point where I was like, this just isn't adding up. And I'm so glad I never signed up. Uh, from what I hear, there are a lot of lawsuits, class action lawsuits against them because they, uh, they suck you in and they charge you for all these leads, these leads that everybody's getting and you are going up against who knows how many guys uh, to get a, a specific job. There's a lot of information already out there on the internet about this specific app, Home Advisor. If you are just getting started out, you have no safety net or you have no transition fund where you're transitioning from one career to another career or you're uh, leaving a job as an employee going to self-employed, well, then maybe you could use this. For those of you who are thinking about doing the transition, here's what you do. Start with side work. Fill up your weekends, fill up your evenings with work for a year, even two years, to see if it's something you wanna do. You gotta start building a network of customers, start building a reputation. I was always kind of harsh on guys who have been in business for considerable amount of time, three years to 10 years, who keep saying, how do you get all your work? What app are you using? Cause I ain't got no work. <laughs> and there's a reason you don't have work. The one reason it could be your local economy sucks for this type of work. And that's not in your control maybe think about getting a different career. Right now, in I, I don't want to say most United States, but most places where this type of job pays well, there is no, uh, no problem with the economy. And if you're not getting work and you've been in business for a couple years, there's something that you're doing wrong. And I say that because I feel it's very, very easy to distinguish yourself amongst the competition. Your typical home improvement guy, small remodel company, are bums. I just experienced it with a customer of mine. Uh, I'm not available to do a project for them. And I'm on another project, so they hired out someone else and it was a disaster. They were used to me working on their house and they've got something completely different. I've been working on their house for years and that's what they're used to. And when I do become available, I have to go fix everything that was done wrong or there was miscommunication about. There was a lot of things. I mean, naps in the backyard, uh, take, taking breaks two, three times a day, sitting in their, their, uh, their outdoor furniture. They had a freaking uh, microwave in the backyard cans laying all over, trash. That person should not be getting repeat business. They will not be getting repeat business from this customer. 
it's very easy to distinguish yourself from that. That is the norm. It is. It might not be the norm for the viewers, but out there in the real world, that is the norm. Low grade, low, low quality, horrible communication, just overall bad experiences. That's why it's so easy. It's just like shooting fish in a barrel if you can just do a few basic things. So I'm gonna go over those few basic things. Um, this may be offensive to some people that have ponytails. <laughs> um, so you have to look at your customer base that has enough money to pay you the wage you wanna make. In my area, it's a dual income family. They're making 200,000 a year. Their AGI is probably right around 150. They're doing pretty well. They own a house, maybe two houses. They are professionals, they're educated. They don't smoke, they don't have ponytails. Uh, they don't have tattoos on their face or their neck. Uh, they don't drive junk cars. And they have a higher education, at least a bachelor's degree, if not a master's degree. They have to actually go to work. They do the same thing we do, but in a different arena. If you have the same level of professionalism as they do, you got the job. If you're well-dressed, you are well-groomed, you don't stink, you don't have a rust bucket pulling up. <laughs> when you pull up, backfiring, they can hear you coming down the street. Well-spoken, uh, fast communication. Digital communication is, is often that the fastest form. Outside of the superficial uh, persona, the salesmanship, um, I would do a couple extras that I know that the, my competition was not doing because I was told that by customers. Show up with a pen, paper, tape measure, and a level. And th this goes back to when I first got started when all I did was remodels. All I did was kitchens, bathrooms, basements, and small additions. I would spend 45 minutes to an hour with the customer in their house just listening to them, asking them questions, and then literally inspect the house, top to bottom. Go into the crawl space, go into the attic, uh, check how level the walls are, check how level the ceiling are, especially in kitchens. My wife just had a friend come over to her house and they just had a high dollar kitchen remodel. They had no idea that floors and ceilings were not perfectly level and parallel. So when they had their cabinets installed, their upper cabinets, it didn't go parallel to the ceiling. You know, you level your base cabinets so you have a spot to put your countertop. Then your upper cabinets go parallel to your base cabinets, but your ceiling, it's not parallel. So you could have one tiny piece of scribe at one end, depends on how, how long the kitchen is, but you could have your cabinets touching the ceiling at one end, and by the time they get to the other end, there's a two inch gap, and you have to cut in some fancy scribe molding. If you had set expectations earlier, saying, you know, we've got some issues with the ceiling and the floor, discuss options, setting expectations early, so there are no surprises at the end. You wanna keep the communication high, uh, set proper expectations. You're gonna win the bid every time. It e almost doesn't even come down to the numbers unless they're way off, like thousands and thousands of dollars off. They're gonna pick the guy sells the highest value. And that's gonna be the way you look, the way you talk, and giving them the perceived value that you know what you're doing and that the estimate that you give them is gonna be an accurate estimate and that there's not gonna be any change orders. You might wanna to explain to them what a change order is. Say, I wanna take extra time to inspect your house so that I can give you an accurate estimate so that I don't have to change the bid in the future. That's called a change order. There is something major that comes up uh, explain to them how a change order works. We're changing the scope of work and I'm gonna need more money. So I established a reputation where I never changed my bid, ever. When I handed over a bid, it was concrete. And I know I've read thousands, I'm, uh, 40, 50, probably getting up to around 60,000 comments on the main YouTube channel. And so many comments, how do you know how to do all this? How do you give a fixed price when you don't know what's behind the wall? Well, when you've done it most of your life, you have a very good idea of the possibilities that can be behind that wall. You know what to look for in anticipation of what's behind the wall. So that reputation that I started of the bid never changes. There are no change orders. There are no, oh, we need some more money. 
to do this or to do that. I do pad the bit a little bit for some unknowns uh, and for my own screw-ups. Nobody's perfect. Make some mistakes, ruin some material, that's already factored into the bid. If you have three years of semi-consistent work, that should be all the marketing you need and you don't need an app. There's no app needed. If you, It's crazy that I talk to these guys through social media that need to know what app I use. I'm like, I don't use a freaking app at all. I mean, I started in 2008 in the biggest recession of our modern time and I was able to get through it. It was pretty easy, pretty easy to establish the reputation, the network of referrals. And when you're referred to someone by their friends or family, you pretty much got the job. They don't even get anybody else to come bid it. You're just, you're just the guy. So I have heard from the, this guy that submitted the questions. Things have changed. Uh, he has had three, four weeks now of consistent good work. And that's also something that you will go through, especially when you don't have a stable economy where you, where you live and do business. There's ups and there's downs, there's ups and there's downs. But the more satisfied customers you get, those ups just keep staying up and the phone just keeps ringing or buzzing or text messages just keep coming in. All right, that's it. If you got questions, Patreon links down below. Cheers, I better finish this before it gets warm.